Hi everybody and welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here with me today for our first of three lessons this week for reading. I'm Miss McDonough and I teach third grade at Hawthorne Elementary in near Columbia City. I really miss my kids so much and I know that they miss me. I also know that your teachers really miss you too, but I'm really excited to be your teacher for reading this week. We're going to continue the strategy of wondering and questioning as we read. Wondering and questioning helps readers think really deeply about a text. So every so often, no matter what genre you're reading, stop and ask yourself questions or uh, make wonderings as you go. You can also stop and tell yourself things that you've learned. Now you can do that in any genre, but this week we're going to be focusing on the genre of nonfiction which is true information about a topic. If you remember, two weeks ago, we read about flashy, fantastic rainforest frogs. Then we traveled to a very different habitat, the desert, and we learned a lot of fascinating facts about the desert and really helped ourselves understand the text by stopping and asking questions as we go. Well, today, we're gonna travel to a third habitat, and we're gonna read about a very special animal. I'd like you to maybe make a guess as to what animal we're going to be reading about today. I know my students at Hawthorne love when I read about animals. Let me give you a clue. The habitat is in the Arctic at the North Pole. What animal do you think we might be reading about today? Well, if you guessed polar bears, you were correct. We're going to be reading this nonfiction text about polar bears by Mark Newman. And what's really cool is he did not only just wrote this book, but he also took the awesome photographs that are in the text. So I'll make sure to show you those as I read. We'll be stopping twice today to stop and ask questions and wondering and also talk about what uh, facts that we've learned as we read. You do not need to stop and jot today, but just stop and think and share aloud in whatever language feels most comfortable to you at home. Uh, to somebody at home or in your own private brain if that works better for you. Are you ready to get started? Okay. Before we get started on really opening the book, let's get our brains ready and thinking about polar bears. What do you think you already know to be true about polar bears and what questions do you have or what are you curious to find out? Think and share now. Thank you and welcome back. I'm really wondering, I put up this handy chart here that's a what we wonder and what we learn double entry chart. And I just jotted down one question here. How big are polar bears? I'm hoping to find that out as we read today. What questions are you hoping to find out? Here we go. Polar Bears by Mark Newman. Here's the title page. the dedication page and the copyright information. He's dedicated this to my mother and father, Estelle and Harry. Polar bears are big. The polar bear is the biggest bear in the world. They're even bigger than the Kodiak brown bear. A giant male polar bear can weigh 1,700 pounds. That's about as heavy as a small car. Females usually weigh less than males. One polar bear was said to weigh 2,200 pounds. That's more than a ton of bear. Polar bears are tiny. Polar bears weigh only one pound at birth. They'll grow to 30 times their birth weight by the time they leave the den. A mother polar bear is not able to eat while she nurses her babies from January to April. By then, mother polar bears are very, very hungry. Polar bears are twins. Most polar bear mothers give birth to twins. Although polar bears usually do not hibernate, expectant or pregnant, mother polar bears do. Mating occurs in mid spring and females dig a den into a snowdrift in the fall. Babies are born just inside the den in early January. The den is cozy, staying 40 degrees warmer than the frigid Arctic air outside. 
This will be our first stop for today. What have you learned about polar bears so far and what questions do you have? Go ahead and think and then share out loud at home or in your own private brain. Do that now. Thank you and welcome back. I had wondered before we started reading, how big do polar bears get? And I found the answer to that. So I'm gonna write that in the what we learned column. Males can weigh more than 2,000 pounds, well, average around 1,700. I also learned that males are usually much heavier than females. But now I have some new questions. I'm really curious, what do polar bears eat? And how long do baby bears stay with their mother? Were your questions similar or different? Where is what you learned similar or different than mine? Let's read the next section. This is where we left off. The den is cozy, staying 40 degrees warmer than the frigid Arctic air outside. Polar bears struggle. Baby polar bears will stay with their mother for over two years as she teaches them all the skills they will need to make it into adulthood. But being a baby bear is not easy. Three out of four do not survive to see their third birthday. Polar bears live in the Arctic. Polar bears live only in the north. Unlike penguins, they do not live in the Antarctic. Penguins and polar bears never get to meet in the wild. Polar bears live in only five countries, all of which surround the North Pole, Russia, Canada, the United States, Alaska, Norway, and Greenland. Polar bears are not really white. Despite what they look like and what most people think, polar bears are black, not white. Under all that warm, thick fur, their skin is totally dark. The fur itself is made up of clear, hollow hairs, sort of like hollow tubes that contain no color whatsoever. The bears look like they are white only because the clear hair reflects the light. This will be our last stop today. What did you learn about polar bears from the part I just read? And what questions come to mind uh, based on what we just read? Go ahead and stop, think, and share. Do that now. Thank you. I had asked the question, how long do baby bears stay with their mother? And I found that out, so I wrote that in blue next to this. Blue uh, polar bears stay with their mother for over two years. I still didn't really find out much about what they eat, so I'm hoping as we read more tomorrow, I can fill that in. What questions did you have? Were they similar or different? What was the most surprising or interesting fact that you learned today? I, the most interesting fact that I learned today was actually a really sad one. It was on the page about polar bears struggling. I didn't know that three-fourths of polar bears do not survive to see their third birthday, and that made me really sad. What was the most fascinating fact that you learned today? Go ahead and tell yourself. Thank you, and welcome back. You probably still have a lot of questions you're wondering about polar bears, and when we gather tomorrow for our second reading lesson, I hope that you find out some of the answers to those questions. I'll be excited to see you then. But now we're gonna to transition to IDR. So I'd like you to find a really good fit book and a good place to read for up to 25 to 30 minutes today uninterrupted. And I'd like you to practice that strategy of wondering and questioning as you read. You might remember that I was reading the key collection from last week, and I had some questions. We know that Grandma Nini is moving to California, and her grandson, Zhao Jimmy, is really upset about this because she's like his best friend. And one of the questions I'd had that I'd written last week was, why does Auntie Helen want Grandma to move to California? Because we found out that Helen is a doctor, and since Grandma's getting older, she thought she'd be able to better uh, keep Grandma healthy. 
But I had also wondered, why is this called the Key Collection? What does that have to do with anything? And I found out some more. Here you can see Jimmy playing with some keys from Grandma's collection. And I found out that the keys actually unlock memories. Like when Grandma Nini's brother, Poe, locked himself in a closet and got stuck. And she tells Jimmy little stories uh, for each key. I'm going to read this one part here where I left off, and then I'm going to think aloud about some wonderings I still have. Do you know what any of the other keys are for? I asked. Don't know, Nini said. I scooped up the keys and started dropping them one by one back into the jar. Nini, are you moving to California? Nini held my hand in hers. Auntie Helen already waits so long. She worry about me and Zhao Jimmy. She is a doctor. Doctor knows best. I pulled my hand away, dropped the last key into the jar, and shut the lid tight. The next chapter is called Getting Started. And I see some, a broom and a broken plate there, so I'm kind of wondering about what that's about. But I'm also wondering, will Jimmy understand why Grandma has to move to California? And I'm also wondering when she does move, what will happen to her key collection? Will she share that with Jimmy and how will that be a part of the story going forward? Don't forget to wonder and question as you read today for IDR. I, I will see you tomorrow for our second day reading about polar bears. Thank you for being here with me today.